say a little more about that. Um, fear is the most fundamental problem we have. Everything else, almost all the other negatives we deal with derive from fear. Okay? Ego is a derivative of fear. Their needs, our wants, our insecurities all derive from fear. Somebody at lunchtime brought up the, an issue of competition. You know, competition. Some competition, you know. Competition drives from fear. There's no need to prove yourself, to prove that you're better, unless you're fearful that you're not good enough, you see. Now there's good sportsmanship and people just, you know, seeing who can run faster than who. I don't mean that. But, you know, the kind of competition I'm talking about, where you have to beat somebody. You know, that's all derived from fear. So fear is the, is the, is the, big, is the big problem. The only way to deal with fear is to address it head on. If you're frightened, you know, I, I run into people all the time and say, I try to go out of body, and as soon as I go out of body, I get in this paralyzed state, and then I hear things going on, and then there's this, you know, big dog on my chest, you know, it looks like he's going to rip out my jug, and I have all these fearful things happen to me, and it scares me, and then I, you know, I, I stop, and I, I can't get out of body because I can't get past the fear. You know, and that's probably a test because he's not ready to go out of body yet. Until he passes the test, he shouldn't. But how do you deal with that fear? You have to accept the worst. Say, all right, what's the worst thing that can happen to me here? All right, the dog rips out my throat. I'll accept that. I'm going on. I'm going to go anyway. If that happens, that happens. I accept it. If you can accept the worst and go on, then what do you have to fear? You've already accepted the worst. So that's one tactic. If you fear, you know, if you're insecure, think about what are you insecure about? Are you, in, are you insecure you're not good enough that you might fail? Then say, well, okay, I might fail. I just might fail, and if I fail, I accept that. I'll tuck my tail between my legs and I'll go home if I fail, you know, and that's okay. Well, now you shouldn't be afraid of failing because you've already accepted that you might. Okay, so that's one way to work at your fears, is accept them. Whatever the worst you can have, like give, me your, you know, give me your worst punch, and we'll see, you know, I'll live with that, I'll deal with it. So that's one way, and that just takes courage. So the antidote to fear is courage. Other than that, you can try to sneak up on it, which is doing the same thing in steps rather than all at once, which is, you know, sort of the, uh, you know, the way often people do, they're afraid so, of going this way, so they go just a little this way and then they cringe and wait if nothing happens. Then they go a little bit more and wait and cringe if nothing happens. If something does happen, they run. But if it doesn't happen, then they go a little closer. You know, that's that same idea of accepting the fear, only you're accepting it an increment at a time. You're not accepting the whole thing. That will work, but you have to be able, you know, you have to be able to, to maybe take a hit or two. You have to face things that are frightening. And a lot of times, that's, that's the big thing about out of body. People are afraid that if they go out of the body, they won't come back, they'll die. But getting out of your body, you know, I mean, the body, this is where we live, you know, we're alive here. Once I get out of that body, what if my body dies? What if something happens to my body while I'm gone, you know? Um, what if I don't come back? And that fear prevents them from ever having that experience. So I tell them that you have to accept your death, that's what's gonna happen. If going out of body means that you, know, you don't come back and that's what you wanna do, and say, that's all right. If I don't come back, that'll be all right. This is what I wanna do. If you're not able to do that, then you're stuck with the fear. So that's kind of tough love, right? I mean, that, that's kind of hard, but uh, that's basically it. You have to get rid of fear. You can't, you can't run from it, you can't cover it up, I mean, you can, but it doesn't really work. You may get it out of your intellect, but it's still in the deep place. The only way to overcome that fear is to face it and get through it. And the only way to face it is to have the courage to accept it. Because if it's a fear, it's hard for anybody to convince you that it's not real, right? When you were six years old, you knew there was a boogeyman under the bed. And your parents came in and said, there's nothing under your bed. And you go, yeah, right, I know there is. <laughs> and it's the same thing if you're afraid of, of whatever, you know, if you're afraid of snakes. You know, somebody tell you, well, snake's not going to hurt you. You know, that's just a little black snake. That's a, it's not going to hurt you. But you're terrified of it anyway. Well, rationality 
is an ineffective tool against irrationality. You're not going to cure, you know, you're, you're not going to change a believer by giving them rational argument. So fears are irrational for the most part. So an irrational fear is not going to be resolved by rational argument. You just save your breath. Talking to yourself or talking to somebody else, that won't do it. Now how do they cure phobias? They cure phobias by a similar way. If you're afraid of spiders and you go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist and want to get over spiders, what they do is they start introducing you to spiders a little bit at a time. That's that, you know, a little bit and a little bit. First they show you pictures of spiders from a distance and then they make you hold pictures of spiders. You know, and then you know, they make you put the picture you know, up against your face, and then they take you to a place where there's spiders in a cage, you know, and it goes on and on and on to where they expose you so much to it that you begin to lose your fear of spiders. So, gee, I did that and I survived, you know. Well, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. And people get over their phobias basically by being pushed into facing the fear, typically a little bit at a time, because the psychiatrist doesn't want to drive them psychotic with a big with a big bang all at once, but that's the only way I know of to overcome fear is to face it. Not facing it just puts it off and, and it just buries it deeper, but it's still there. Yeah, I have a lot of people tell me they don't have any fear, and that's very seldom true. I have a lot of them tell me they don't have any beliefs too, and that's, that's even less likely to be true.